Today we're talking to Dr. Debbie Thompson about cannabis and mental illnesses. You know, I get a lot of young people who are referred because they're on marijuana and, you know, we want to find out, you know, how much that's impacting their mental illness. And we brought adults we can trust to bring these conversations home. Do you um, talk a lot in school about this topic? No. I can't count the times people have been like, you want to hit my vape or like, you want to have some weed? Do you think they're doing it because of peer pressure, because they feel like they need to, or? I feel like they do it to really fit in and to be cool. I know it's like been legalized recently, so a lot more people are trying it, I think. The only question I would have is how it really fiddles with their brain a lot and how it really happens. Between birth and, and young adulthood, about 25, your brain is constantly evolving and developing. It's taking the information that it, it learns and it's developing connections and pathways that we'll use as adults. Now, what happens with marijuana is it goes in and works on the reward pathway the active ingredient in cannabis. Do you know what that is? THC? Yeah. Oh, it's really <laughs> <laughs> So THC stands for Delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol. It's about 10 times fast. Yeah. <laughs> the THC will actually move that pathway into overdrive. That's what gives you that, that high, but the long-term effects where you see more issues with some of those um, anxiety, some of the depression, um, and even psychosis. What is psychosis? We often describe it as a group of symptoms, and in that group of symptoms, there are things like hallucinations. Hallucinations can be auditory, um, visual, tactile. Um, you can even have smells, and then you have delusions, so false, fixed false beliefs. They also have symptoms that are more negative symptoms, deficits, so individuals can look withdrawn, depressed. They can also be quite disorganized. And it's not just one group of symptoms that's associated with psychosis, usually a mix. If you have other mental illnesses, like schizophrenia in your family, like that would be more of a risk, I would think. Do you know how common schizophrenia is? One out of a hundred. You know, if they are at risk for developing schizophrenia, they might be genetically vulnerable, and then they use a drug that changes the way their brain functions. They are much more likely to experience the negative side. Same sort of thing with psychosis. With psychosis, a lot of the individuals, they never reach their full level of potential. And the longer someone is psychotic, the more damage we see. Now that you've heard what she has to say about that, what do you think the school should do differently? Talk about it more. It really is a health issue, and it shouldn't be a barrier for conversations. You don't really think about that when you think of cannabis use, but yeah. mental illness is a big piece of cannabis. There should be discussions about what happens with a developing brain and a developing body when you expose it to any substances. Why aren't we teaching about the way the brain works on drugs? That would be an awesome biology class. Or a mental illness, mental health class would be amazing. And I think also like education like earlier in people that are younger, like elementary school, because like you want to protect those people from like drug use and like talking about drugs, but it still might be happening like in their family, in their home life, and they deserve to have like that kind of information. It's important we learn more about the effect of cannabis use on psychosis, on schizophrenia, on the individuals. And that if you want to learn more about this, go to bcss.org. And have a happy new year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs>